Okay, so um, it's, it's a little tough for me to stay in the uh, problem space sometimes because I love talking about solutions. So I, I, I really tried hard not to talk about the solution and to, to, to get up on the front side of this. So, um, you know, I, I thought I'd lay out some of the content supply chain challenges uh, at Turner and really kind of talk about the, the as is. Um, and uh, interestingly, after I, I, I made this thing, it seemed less to me to be a, a chain, but more like two opposing funnels where we have a huge amount of complexity coming in one side of the fun funnel and a huge amount of complexity coming out the other side of the funnel. And the job of the supply chain is really to somehow make sense of all that in the middle and, and enable it. But, um, but on the upstream side, you know, we have uh, original programming uh, that uh, was either internally produced uh, or externally produced, um, as well as uh, you know, acquired programming that we're getting through uh, other distributors um, and uh, such as, uh, you know, Warner Brothers would be a good example there. And um, we, uh, we have a, a content delivery specification that, that all of those folks use to deliver that programming. We, we bring it in-house and we process it through our content supply chain and we send it to the downstream systems. That includes uh, Turner's uh, linear master control, so all of our uh, linear air playout. Uh, and we source our uh, C3 VOD off the tail of that linear stream. We do uh, uh, live to VOD processing. Then there's our non-C3 VOD, uh, electronic sell through subscription video on demand, and our direct-to-consumer uh, OTT-based products. And, um, and even within that uh, list, there's, there's a huge amount of variability. It, it would be awesome if if we had the, the um, ability to, to act like a company like Netflix where you have one product, you know, you just, how, how can I optimize my supply chain for this one product? But we have lots of different networks. We have lots of different uh, platforms. Uh, we have lots of different products. So it, it, it drives a huge amount of complexity into the downstream uh, side of our, uh, of our content supply chain. So some challenges. Uh, so. Uh, not surprisingly, we often find distribution masters that we get from our upstream suppliers to be out of compliance with our delivery specification. Imagine that, you know. Of course, there is no way you could go in a tool and say, create the Turner format, you know. So it's just, please follow this long Word document and hopefully you'll follow the instructions correctly to create a format that, that works for us. And that's, that's kind of what it is. So, so we're out of compliance. Um, and so what do we do? Well, you know, us being the generous, kind souls that we are, we fix them in post, right? Sure, we'll fix them. You know, the brand says, you know, please work with this, uh, this, this supplier, and they give us a file that doesn't meet the criteria. Well, uh, you know, we can swap some audio channels. We can, we can correct that pull-down issue. We can, we can do all this, because we want the brands to be successful, you know? So we, we do a lot of post-production. Um, and then this is the other thing. and. I, is anyone from our craft transcoding team here? I don't think anyone is. I see former members of the tra craft transcoding. So you, who's heard of the term craft transcoding? OK, Clyde has. Uh, so you, you think of craft editing, right? You know, that, that's somebody that's a, that's a high-skilled editor. We have craft transcoding. Why do we need craft transcoding? Because we get so much weird crap in that we need craft transcoders that can build transcode workflows that are able to have amazing degrees of subtlety in the way that they process media. So that's, that's a whole new job description. And with all due respect to our tra craft transcode team, we shouldn't have to have that job, and those people have better things to do. So uh, that, that's, that's another one of our things. So, and uh, the, the great thing is that uh, you know, every once in a while, those, those mistakes uh, slip all the way onto air. It's that thing where the uh, you know channels came in reversed, and when we did the stereo mix down for the TCM movie, we mixed down the DVS accidentally onto the left and the right channel, and then somebody said, "Oh no!" Yeah, that's that kind of stuff happens sometimes, and uh, you know it's it's not the fault of the person that was doing the mix down; it's that the the tracks weren't in the right place to begin with, right? And so how do we how do we make sure that doesn't happen? And then you know my favorite is uh, we 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 do deals with SVOD companies. We make lots of money when we license our content uh, to, to these companies to distribute. And then, despite our best effort, uh, we have issues regarded to frame blending and other artifacts that 
believe it or not, the most sensitive people in the industry are the SPOD companies. They're the ones that we get to read. So in a good way, I think that they, they have set the standard by which the industry will operate from a quality perspective. Um, I, I would like to be operating at the same level of quality on our front end as many of these uh, SPOD companies. But, you know, we've definitely gotten bit on the back of it and had, uh, and I won't tell you how much, but it is significant dollar value eroded from our margin on these deals because of redeliveries. So, so there's, a, there's an issue right there. Um, here's another good one. Uh, we don't have a true master that can serve all of our current businesses. Right, so um, so we bring that distribution master in. Well, that's that's pretty cool. It's a it's kind of a master because we create other things from it. That's what I define a master to be. So it's sort of inter intermediate work product. Um, but uh, but it it doesn't uh, it, it's it's a distribution master, right? You know, we go straight to our format, straight to our digital format. There's nothing that we can sit there as a trusted asset that we can repurpose. So what happens? We endlessly reprocess distribution masters to meet specific requirements. I, I see a few people nodding, right? They've lived this, right? So, so we'll go back to that distribution master over and over and over and say, oh, well, this person needs 2398, and that person needs 2997, and this person needs HD, and that person needs SD. Constantly going through, and if there was anything wrong with that distribution master when it came in the door, and there, there could have been, we fix it over and over and over and over again. Um, and that's, that's kind of nuts. Um, this is another favorite. Um, and this was one of the reasons that we had some of those issues with the uh, SVOD folks early on. Uh, digital distributes in, as a progressive format, by and large, right? I mean, uh, our, our, our direct-to-consumer um, and, and EST and SVOD environments want progressive. But if we treat broadcast assets as our master, we're always going to be doing this deinterlacing thing um, and getting back out. So we, we actually, uh, we don't have, we throw away a lot of times that progressive or we ask for the distribution master as 1080i and therefore we have a, a hard time supporting our uh, digital businesses. Another thing uh, uh, that we do is um, we, we take these functions uh, of processing and we build them over and over and over and over again in market after market after market, you know. Um, and so there's, there's not a good uh, ability to uh, consolidate uh, the, the core repositories that, that hold and process uh, this material. So um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Lean. Uh, you know, I, I love to look in other industries and to steal their ideas and appropriate them for, for our industry. And manufacturing is an industry that is ripe with uh, opportunities for, for uh, IP theft from process optimization perspective. And um, these are the eight wastes of lean. Um, and, uh, you know, lean is a, a really old uh, manufacturing philosophy that goes back to, like, total quality management with Toyota. Uh, Agile is, is based on lean, if you're familiar with Agile software development process. So here are the eight wastes. And guess what? We have all of them. Right, so we, uh, we overproduce material that doesn't always make it to air. We're always look, keeping an eye on overproduction. We move media that doesn't need to be moved. We store media that doesn't need to be stored. We have media waiting in queues, right, for the next thing down the line to process it. We have overprocessing. We have errors and mistakes in the front of our supply chain that cause endless amounts of rework. Uh, we have people taking motion throughout multiple systems that they don't need to take. And ultimately, we're wasting the time and talent of the people on our team as they're suffering through all this, this other waste. So, uh, so there, there's, there's hope, right? So we would like to have higher quality inputs to our supply chain with re less correction and rework required downstream, right? So if we could get that distribution master to a place where it was easier to deliver, right, and, and offered a better source file for all of the downstream workflows, we, we would be uh, in, a better, in a better place. Um, we would like to be able to trust our masters. And this is a big deal, this, this idea of, of trust, you know, because 
if we want to get to the level and scale to the level that, that Turner wants to achieve, and probably most media organizations uh, want to achieve, we have to automate content processing. We, we cannot have content processing be a manual activity unless you trust your master. You will never have a business that's capable to support automation because you'll be, you'll be re-QCing that material constantly because it wasn't trusted on the front side. So trust is huge. You'll never be able to get to the level of, of uh, reliable, repeatable content processing unless there's trust on the, on the inputs. Um, and uh, the other thing is um, within, within that master, um, the more variance we have in that master, the more time we're going to spend testing. Every time we upgrade a transcoder, every time we onboard a new auto QC system, every time we uh, move to any form of media processing uh, or playback, we'll, we'll be uh, adding debt to our QC, QA, QC load for, for those systems. So uh, it's really important that we constrain the number of variants of that master that we have available to us so that we can be, we can be efficient. Um, in, uh, in how we evolve these systems over time. And uh, we'd like to establish a, a truly global master. So um, as a matter of Steve Fish is visiting, um, and uh, one of the big discussion points that we've been having is how Turner can really act like a, one company, right? How, how can we think about the way that we source our media so that it is that the international market is not uh, an afterthought. Um, it's built into the way we think about the masters from the very, very first day. Um, and, uh, and so we need that global master that can store media efficiently while servicing all of our platforms, products, and markets without rework. That's, that's dream of vision right there. And uh, we'd like to produce play-ready distributions from our supply chain that will be accepted in more monetization systems. It sounds kind of like an ATM card, right? <laughs> I want an ATM card that's accepted everywhere. But uh, it, just, just this, you know, I, we don't want to produce a play-ready format uh, and then say, well, yeah, but you know, we, we need that play-ready format, but we, we need it tweaked just this way. We, we want to produce it, know it's going to work, but then also have the ability to drive acceptance of that format throughout the industry. Right, and that's going to take a lot of a lot of communication, and a lot of influence, um, you know, to be able to achieve. So, if, if only there were some solution. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you. <laughs>